there, it's Karen. Welcome back to my channel. We talk about everything Maryland and DC. We have so many people that are relocating back to the DC area for work. And the number one question I get is, where should I live? DC or Maryland? So today we're gonna go through it all. We're gonna look at the broader strokes of DC versus Maryland. And then we're gonna get more concise and I'm gonna show you what you can get for your money if you choose DC or if you choose Maryland. So let's just dive right in. Okay, if this is your first time to this channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about work, eat, sleep, play in DC and Maryland, make sure you tap that subscribe button and that little bell so it'll let you know when we have new videos. We are getting calls, email, texts every single day from people relocating here to Maryland and DC and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about relocating here, make sure you give us a call, email, text, all our information is here and we got your back and we'll make it as seamless as possible. All right, let's get right to it. So the top three questions I get asked when people are trying to decide between Maryland and DC are taxes, politics, and schools. And we're gonna to touch on all three and then we're gonna get into more specifics, but everybody's situation is different. There are many counties in Maryland, so you gotta check with your tax professional for your particular situation. Okay, so now that I got the disclaimer out of the way, let's just get into it. So on average in Maryland, the property taxes are much higher than in DC. You can see by this little chart I pulled for a purchase price of $500,000, the average tax rate in Maryland for property taxes is 0.94%. In DC, it's a little bit of a different calculation, but it comes out to be around 0.85%. So there is a big difference depending on where you buy your house. As far as sales taxes are concerned, both Maryland and DC are 6%, so that kind of evens itself out. And like I said, in Maryland, each county can have its own tax, so it depends where you are buying. Moving on to politics. In Maryland, we've got two senators and eight representatives. Of the eight representatives, seven of them are Democrat and one is Republican. This is today in 2021. In DC, as we know, DC is not a state, so DC does not have any senators and it is not represented. And in fact, you'll see license plates in DC that say taxation without representation. It is what it is. So if you're into politics, you may wanna choose Maryland over DC. So let's talk about schools. Another question a lot of my clients ask me when trying to decide between DC and Maryland is about universities. So the University of Maryland is comprised of 12 different universities, plus there are three other higher education centers that you get in-state tuition. In DC, DC has only one public university, the University of the District of Columbia. But DC has a program called TAG, the Tuition Assistance Grant, that helps offset the tuition for any public university in any state of the whole United States. It's an awesome program, so check it out. I'm gonna put the link below for TAG because it does offset that problem that DC doesn't have the state universities that the other states have. So depending on what you're thinking, Maryland has more in-state tuition universities, but DC has this program, but you do have to qualify. So these are your general comparisons between DC and Maryland. Obviously they border each other and so everything else is the same as far as weather, entertainment, restaurants. Clearly DC is a city, more urban, more culture. Um, Maryland has got more diversity as far as things to do, mountains, hikes, et cetera, et cetera. But that's all pretty obvious. So let's get into the more specifics. If you were gonna buy a house to decide where to, whether to live in DC or Maryland, what would you get for your money? And let's go into the property values, the lot size, public high schools, and all that good stuff. So for this example, I'm gonna stay in Montgomery County, which borders DC, and I'm actually gonna stay in Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase DC versus Chevy Chase Maryland. So we're really just crossing the street to get from Maryland to DC. So for this example, we're gonna look at two houses, one in DC, one in Maryland, both priced at the same around $950,000. That's pretty much what you get for a house in Chevy Chase, DC in Maryland. In fact, this is a starter house on the small side. So here are the main differences. The lot size in the DC house is gonna be smaller. 
They're both going to be about the same age. And these are both of these houses, as you can see, the first house in DC is on Northampton. Super cute. Here's some pictures. You can see it's really, really a cute house to live in. The second house in Chevy Chase, Maryland on Summit. Also super cute, really well done. You know, I really like both these houses. But the lot on the DC house is only 4,488 square feet. And the lot on the Chevy Chase, Maryland house is 7,555 square feet. So the lots in Maryland are gonna be a little bit bigger. Also houses in Maryland probably may have a garage, whereas the DC houses very rarely do. And if they do, they're gonna be more expensive than this. So this gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can get as far as your money. So my example of these two houses, both in Chevy Chase, one in DC and one in Maryland, they're not that different. I think in Maryland, you got the garage and a little bit more land, but they're pretty close together. They're both built in the thirties because they're just across the border from each other. If I put that circle out a little broader, I would say in general, you'll get more land, more backyard, possible garage in Maryland. Whereas in DC to get a backyard and get a garage, the price is going to go much higher. So that's a general rule of thumb. Now there's so many different neighborhoods in DC that have different cultures and different pros and cons. That's for another video as well as in, in Montgomery County, Maryland, which is just bordering DC. But for this example, I think it gives you an idea of what you can get for the same price. Moving on public high schools. The so public high schools is probably the biggest question I get. And as realtors, we're really not supposed to give our opinion on them. So we give websites, which I'm going to do look below. I'm going to put a link to niche.com, which ranks the two public high schools, the one for Chevy Chase, DC, and the one for Chevy Chase, Maryland. The one for Chevy Chase, Maryland is BCC, but that's the Chevy Chase and is ranked number 17. Book high school for Chevy Chase, DC is Woodrow Wilson high school, which is, you can see here on niche.com, it's ranked number 52. Each school has got its own characteristics, so it's really up to each family to decide which place is better for them. Okay, so we've got a little bit of differences with DC versus Maryland. I do have videos on both the pros and cons of Maryland and the pros and cons of Washington, DC. I encourage you to watch both of them. If you have any questions about anything I said today, you can comment below or you can call, email, text. My team and I would love to help you if you're thinking about moving to Maryland or DC. Just reach out day, night, weekend, we gotcha. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please tell your friends and subscribe. I do appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day, bye.